2.08 p.m., Bill and I left Georgia Street Juvenile and headed for 1200 Loma Linda Avenue. It was eight blocks from the office. It took us four and a half minutes to reach the vacant lot where the strange behaving juvenile was reported to have been seen. Stand still. Reality, man, reality. I, I could see the center of the earth. Purple flame down there, the pilot light. All the way down. Purple flame down there, the pilot light. Pilot light of... He's clean, Joe. Creation, Except reality. Please. Reality. What's your name, son? You can see my name if you look hard enough. Come on now, what's your name? Don't you know my name? My name's Blue Boy. What do you think, Joe? Cardwheels? No sugar cubes. I'll make you book. He's been dropping that acid we've been hearing about. All right, son. You're under arrest. It's our duty to advise you of your constitutional rights. You have the right to remain silent. And any statement you make may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed before any questioning. Do you understand that? There I am. I'm over there now. I'm not here anymore. My hair is green and I'm a tree. You ever see anybody this torn up? Well, it's a sense he's not strung out on sugar cubes. Yeah. All right. Let's take him to central receiving. Come on, son. Even if your body does die, your mind will live on. Yeah, we know. Come on. You're the dirty disbelievers. The evil disbelievers. The evil, evil, evil! Right, come on, son. Settle down. Brown, blue, yellow, green, green, orange, red, 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 red. I can hear them. I can hear them all. Yeah, sure you can, kid. Let's go back to the office. We'll all listen. Bill and I took the sugar cubes found on the subject to the Scientific Investigation Division located in the police building in downtown Los Angeles. We talked to forensic chemist Ray Murray. We filled him in on the subject's appearance and his behavior pattern. Tell us about the stuff, Ray. Visual distortions, strangely disoriented. It's a relatively new drug developed in Switzerland virtually by accident. A Swiss biochemist by the name of Hoffman came up with the first synthesis of the drug in 1938. Yeah. Lysergic acid, diethylamide tartrate, LSD-25. What's it look like, Ray? LSD is odorless, colorless, tasteless. Comes in two forms, liquid and powder. I'll run these sugar cubes through, but I can tell you right now, they contain LSD. 4 p.m., Bill and I left the crime lab and headed back toward Georgia Street Juvenile. Before we left him, Ray Murray filled us in on more facts and figures. A kilo of LSD, two and two-tenths pounds, can be divided into five to ten million doses. Murray also gave us one last frightening fact. LSD is so potent that a single pound of the preparation could turn every person in Los Angeles County into a total psychotic. The population of the county, 7 million people. Wednesday, October 5th, six months went by. LSD users were increasing at an alarming rate, particularly among juveniles. By now, the users had established their own language. The drug itself was now called the ticket, the ghost, the beast, the chief, the hawk, or simply 25. Users now referred to themselves as acid heads or acid freaks. A trip still referred to having taken the drug, but now more often the words a bum trip and freak out were being heard, meaning a bad LSD experience. Friday, December 9th, 8.30 p.m. We figured the Sunset Strip might be a good place to dig up a lead. Since the warrant on Benji Carver was registered and in the hands of all units, we hoped it wouldn't be too long before the suspect was picked up. The parade of teenagers begins at Laurel Canyon and Sunset, and ends at Doheny. On Friday and Saturday nights for most of the young people in the city, the strip had become the in place to go. It had also become the scene of teenage riots. Sandy, and the May, what's happening? Nothing much. Been behaving yourselves? Haven't touched any more of that acid, that's for sure. We were even invited to an acid party tonight. We told them no. We're on our way home. You told who no? Blue Boy. He asked us. Do you have the address? Yeah, someplace. It's supposed to be up in the hills somewhere. You gonna break up the party? About time somebody tried, don't you think? Ten eighteen p.m., Bill and I drove up to the address given us by the two girls. It was in the Hollywood Hills. It was an old house that had seen better days.
marijuana. Hold it. Stay right where you are. Freeze. All of you, keep your hands in place like you. On your feet. Come on. All right. Now sober up and try to listen to this. It's our duty to advise you of your constitutional rights. Now, you have the right to remain silent, and any statement you make may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed before any questioning. Now, do you understand that? I do, man. I understand it. I'm the one you want to talk to, because I sure understand it. Well, fine. Suppose you climb down off of there and come over here and talk to me. Talk to me about Blue Boy. He's super seen, man. Is he coming back? No, man. Dig this seat table? We're in power. Suppose you go over there and sit down. Bill, I'll call the office, get a couple of black and whites up here to take them in. Right. It was midnight when we arrived at the Macon Apartments on West Beverly Boulevard. We got the manager out of bed. Police officer, what's your name? Philip Jameson. How old are you? Eighteen. Oh, Benji. Look at him. What's the matter with him? He's been like that for over an hour. He had some kind of a fit. And then he got quiet. Look at this, Joe. Acid reds, yellows, rainbows. Those are Benji's. He's been taking them all day. Just kept saying he wanted to get further out. Further out. Further out. Well, he made it. He's dead. the coroner's jury ruled that the 18-year-old suspect had administered himself an overdose of lysergic acid diethylamide in combination with various barbiturates and had thus taken his own life. I'll tell you what I know. I know that, in fact, too many kids that begin with pot end up with heroin, then on to LSD. I know that if you drink, you suffer a loss of judgment. If you drink to excess. But I also know that judgment returns when you sober up. I know, and so do you. When you flip out on an acid trip, you never know when you're going to slip out again. This is now, Bentley, not a couple of years ago. We've had time now to see and study the effects of LSD. People who haven't had a dose in weeks sail out on another trip. They never know when. The minute they drop one acid capsule or ingest it in any way, they bought the farm. They've lost any chance to depend on and even restore that most precious of all inner senses, judgment. And in my way of thinking, without judgment, you might as well be dead. Your brain is, so why not the rest of you? We were talking about marijuana. We still are. Marijuana is the flame. Heroin is the fuse. LSD is the bomb. So don't you try to equate liquor with marijuana, mister. Not with me. You may sell that jazz to another pothead, but not to somebody who spends most of their time holding some sick kid's head while he vomits and wretches sitting on a curbstone at 4 o'clock in the morning. And when his knees get enough starch back in him so he can stand up and empty his pockets, you can bet he'll turn out a stick or two on marijuana. And you can double your money. He'll be holding a sugar cube or a cap or two. So don't you con me with your mind expansion, slob. I deal with kids every day. I try to clean up the mess that people like you make out of them. I'm the expert here. You're an Vous savez que Bud Powell, atteint de tuberculose, est soigné actuellement dans un sanatorium de la région parisienne. Nous sommes allés le voir et nous avons essayé de l'interviewer. Je dis essayer parce que Bud est un homme excessivement renfermé auquel il faut poser plusieurs fois la même question avant qu'il accepte d'y répondre. De plus, il a été techniquement difficile de réaliser cette interview, mais je pense que malgré cela, vous prendrez beaucoup d'intérêt à l'entendre. Bud vous m'avez dit tout à l'heure que vous aviez écrit un nouveau morceau depuis votre arrivée à l'hôpital. Voulez-vous nous en donner le titre et le fredonner I 
Bud, pour qui avez-vous composé ce morceau, s'il vous plaît Bud, voulez-vous nous dire quels sont vos pianistes préférés Al Bud, voulez-vous citer d'autres pianistes I told you, Al Haig. Well, let me see. Un piano. I always did like Billy Kyle. Hank Jones. Je vous... Notons qu'à ses débuts, Bud fut fortement influencé par Billy Kyle. Bud Powell, quel est votre maître au piano? I tell you. I don't know. I tell you, he used to take me out for a drive in his big Lincoln. He had a sky blue Lincoln. Yeah? And... Quel est votre compositeur favori, Bud? Bud, quel trompettiste, quel saxophoniste aimez-vous? Et parmi les basses. When he was alive, I was better for it. I like uh, Tommy Potter. He's a good bass player. But si. Quels sont vos accompagnateurs favoris, Bud? Max Roach and Ray Brown. Bud Powell va beaucoup mieux au sanatorium. Les docteurs lui ont donné quelques jours de vacances. Il est dans notre studio ce soir et va nous donner lui-même de ses nouvelles. I feel fine, thank you. The doctor said I'll be well soon and I'll go home. He said it's improving fast. Je vais bien. Bud, avez-vous entendu des choses intéressantes récemment? Well, Charlie Mingus is nice and Tashi Cole is nice. I think she's a very technical pianist. Bud, écoutez-vous souvent des disques de Art Tatum? I'm crazy about Tatum. He's still my best friend, one of my good friends. Bud, quelles sont vos dernières compositions? Three new tunes. In the mood for a classic is one. Uh, hey, Diddy D is another, and uh, or Noche Con Francis is the other. Jake, connaissez-vous Bill Evans, Bud? I heard him on records only. He's nice. He can play. I heard he, he was sick. Je ne l'ai entendu. Bud, merci d'être venu et au revoir. Yeah. Bonsoir. Je reviens bientôt.